You can support the creation of these videos by supporting me at patreon.com forward slash John D. Ruddy. I was there, man, when it all started. Following the hype, collecting all the merch, and getting Pokemon Blue for Christmas, and indeed, catching them all. I'm here to help you build your own Pokedex. What do I mean by that? We are going to draw every single Pokemon. Yes, like there's like over a thousand of them now. We're going to do it. Not only will you learn to draw Pokemon, but you'll also learn loads of great skills for drawing cartoons and drawing people uh, that you can bring into your own illustrations. You can start your collection with a ring binder and some poly pockets, or if you just want to draw, you'll need simple printer paper, a pencil, I prefer a HB or 2H because we're going to be rubbing these lines out later, an eraser and some sort of pen or fine tip liner and indeed some colourful markers for the end product. Come along and join as we try to draw them all. Hi folks. So today we are going to be drawing a tiny little Charmander here. Well, maybe not this one specifically. We'll give him a bit of a better pose. So before we begin uh, our main pieces, we're just going to do some quick draws first. Just, you know, if you don't want to do the big long one, that's fine. But let's draw a quick Charmander. So for Charmander, his head, nice big kind of round head like this with a little shape like that underneath. And he's got one eye here and one eye here. So it's flat along the bottom and round at the top. And then his pupil, he's got big adorable pupils. So you can, you can draw a little circle in the top of each and then you can color in the rest. Because then that creates your, see it's adorable. You can give him some little because he's cute, but he's also fierce. And a bit like Bulbasaur, he's got a little point in the mouth. And you can give him a couple little fangs too. And classic pose for Charmander, he got his hands up. And some of these Pokemon hands are really easy. It's just two wee fingers and a wee thumb. Simple. And then his body, put a big circle on it. And that circle kind of goes down to the bottom. And then one leg. I can actually do it like this. And one, two, three. And one, two, three. tail like that and the fire coming like that that's simple uh, Charmander no simple Charmeleon so Charmeleon uh, we'll start with his head so his head he's got that horn on the top we're gonna have him with his head to the side gonna look very mean. Looks a little bit like um, uh, Scyther there as well. He's got his neck. He's got two shoulders. He's got his two arms. And now Charmeleon's arms are quite easy to draw because Claws just stick out of them like that, so they're just wee roundy bottoms. And now his body, similar way to what we did for Charmander, and similar way that second circle you can do there. And his legs are like this. Now his bottom legs, <laughs> his bottom legs, his, doesn't have top legs. Like that. And to give him a little fang there as well. And likewise, the 
tail, tail slightly hidden behind. And oof, give him some fire. Boom, simple Charmeleon. And now, simple Charizard. Now, I mean, again, I say simple. So we're gonna start with the head. Um, so Charizard, we're gonna start with his mouth. And there's nostrils, so that's the weird kind of shape for the top of his mouth. Yeah, and his mouth's gonna be open like that. And rawr, like that. And his eyes are gonna be here. So you still have that little white glint. Rawr. There we go. Now his head. We give him a little shape around there. Now he has two horns coming out of his head. And now his neck comes down like that, so Nick pops up. And just like Charmeleon, he's got his little pop shoulders. Except this one, we can have his hands coming up like that. And one, two, three, it's like a shamrock. And like one, two, three, you're like, what? So his claws can be pointed inwards, like that. And finally, well not finally, but yeah, he's got a big belly, but again similar to Charmander. Charmeleon. And then of course, the bit that makes him really cool, his wings. So watch this, it goes up like this, and do the same on the other side. And then a spike at the top, spike at the top. And then it goes down, and it goes down. It helps when you're kind of doing them the same step on either side, and then you just follow that line back around, see? Follow that line back around. And then, you can draw a little line down here. Uh, it'll be easier to see here, so what do you see? So it goes up and down. Up and down and tucks in behind his back there. So likewise, up and down, but of course, part of it's blocked by the fire. Up and do you know what? Yeah, right, bring it right in there. So there's our simple Charizard. They're the quick ones. So you want to do the longer one? Uh, but, before we begin, I would just like to start off with just a little housekeeping tip. Now, for those of you who watched the first episode, for, well, for those of you who didn't, go back and watch it, but for those of you who did, uh, you remember how we traced over uh, Bulbasaur. Rather than doing that, though, what? I propose we do, so that we're not constantly having to drag poor Bulbasaur in and out of the folder every single time, is we create our own template. So let's just say, do you know what? I'm just gonna write Bulbasaur here. And you know what actually I might do as well? Just so that we're all on the same level. I might even just draw a bit of a line here. Give us a little bit of an idea of how big our character's gonna be. So I was just using uh, Bulbasaur as a, an example. But what I can do here now is I can use this as my template from now on so I don't have to constantly take out Bulbasaur.
Charmander. Boom! And indeed we'll be drawing this. And now in pencil, let me just take a little note of that little line there. Right, and we take our uh, template out. Oh, we don't need it now, so we can put it away. Uh, well, not put it away away, but away enough. Okay, so Charmander. So I'm gonna give Charmander a bit of a fun pose, rather than just, you know, him standing up straight. Let's have a wee quick look at what I drew all those many, many years ago. Yeah, okay. So, what can we learn from this? Uh, so see the way his head is like a lot bigger and his, his wee legs look tiny. Um, so we can improve that. Also, you can see I made a mistake, but because I started straight in with pen, that line there was, was a little bit stuck there. Um, also, other pro tip, you may have noticed this, uh, there's a little bit of um, pressing off against this, the color leaked across. That's because I used crayons here, and crayons are great, don't get me wrong, I love crayons, but they, when you press down on them from another page, they can ruin your picture so you if, if you are gonna if you are gonna use crayons like this in a copy book where this picture of a crayon picture of a crayon get a blank sheet and put it in between yeah exactly so let's go um right so with charmander i'm gonna start off with his head and it's kind of an oval shape, but the bottom half of it just has a little, little kind of dink out for where his mouth is. And so he's going to be like, it's like he's running forward. It's like he's using Skull Bash. Well, Skull Bash is more of a, what's his name? More of a squirtle thing, but still. Anyway, so his body. No, we don't, we don't need to draw the rest, but yeah. So his body's there, simple as. And one of his legs is coming out here. And his wee foot is coming out here. And his other leg is coming out here. Now, it's actually going to be hidden behind this body, but still, we draw this so we get a nice good round thing. And then his foot, because we're seeing it, seeing it at an angle. And then he's got one, two, three, and one, two, three. Now Charmander, in a lot of ways, is a much easier draw than Bulbasaur. So if you manage Bulbasaur, you're, you, you, you should be fine with Charmander. Now, let's see. Uh, we can add his belly, his yellow belly. Not that that has anything to do with his bravery. Um, let's see, and his arms. And his arms coming up like this. One arm is coming up like this, and the other arm is actually coming out here behind his head. But you see, I'm just drawing a little guideline just so the, ar so the arm's not like coming out of here. You know, and then it looks weird kind of once you actually see it, see it all together. So that's why, you know, you draw that little guideline so you see it is coming out of his shoulder where it should be coming out of. And then his tail. So his tail, again, is coming out of his body. Nice flow. And again, you know, I have those lines there from our template. You know, like, they're guidelines. They're more like guidelines as opposed to rules. Okay. And then the yellow part of his tail a bit there okay and now the flame the flame on his tail so trick or draw on flame is flame is wild flame is fire is is wild so don't think about it too much just let now again this is from years of practice so you know like you might be sitting there going oh this is so good uh, but just let the pencil go don't think about it too much Likewise with that second little line, although we'll be rubbing that one out. Um, okay, so I'm just going to rub this line out a little bit so that we have a slightly clearer face. 
Okay. And like with what we did with Bulbasaur, um, we're actually going to start with the top of the mouth. Like that. And we'll come down here. I like that. I'll give him a little, two, two, two little nostrils. Yeah, the starter Pokemon in the first generation, all the, like all three of them have a very kind of similar vibe in how they're designed, which I think is a good idea. You know, like like when we were all starting, you know, we were all kind of like, which one do we pick? Well, I wasn't because I was like, fire, give me fire. Uh, so his eyes. So the way. That we get now, so his eyes, his eyes are going to come up kind of about this far, but we can start with the bottom of his eyes, both his eyes, and it's kind of nice and kind of curved wee line like that. And then the top of his eyes go up, and they curve, and they come back down like that. There's a tiniest bit of a point up here, but barely. That's why I'm barely mentioning it because I don't want you sitting there going, "All right, there needs to be a point." It's the tiniest bit of a point. And give him a wee bit of a. And his eyes. So he has very different pupils to uh, Bulbasaur. His pupils are massive. And they're also really cute. He's got that, that big white spot, uh, which is just the reflection. And this is the bottom part of his pupil here so it's kind of like an up uh, a moon on its side but that'll make more sense when we're coloring it in and then his hands thankfully his hands are super simple there's a lot of pokemon who tend to use hands like this so just two wee triangles and a little thumb and like that's a really handy thing if ever you're making up your own wee characters and stuff it just shows you you can you can do very simple things because hands hands are tricky hands are tough and we will get two hands. Uh, <laughs> two hands. Uh, do you know what? Actually, I'm going to make his body a little bit smaller. And again, this is why we do our guidelines now. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller. Yeah, that works. Okay. Now we're going to do our lines or hard lines so now his toes you do the toes on first and they're mainly little triangles but just a slightly rounded edge to them and they're they're quite long as well see so you just give a little curve to and then a little line round for the belly and then this goes round I always get so quiet <laughs> I always get so quiet because it's like John don't make a mistake But that's okay. There's always another piece of paper if I go too badly. Okay. Now his other leg. So watch this. I don't actually complete the line that way um, because that actually goes into his foot. It'll just show you. So again, now there's a slight overlap in these toes so you can see there um, all right and his arm charmander yeah i could do a much better charmander impression before my voice had broken <laughs> before my voice got a lot deeper yeah, no, that's as high as I can go right now. 
But you can still do Charmeleon a little bit better. That wasn't great though. <laughs> yeah, feel free to cringe. Okay, and... See, this is where doing your pencil, these big lovely curves like this, this is where doing your pencil lines first really, really uh, pay off because it just allows you to get that real kind of set, that smoothness to it. And you can see where it should go. Namely, slightly a little bit further up there, I should have kept going. But it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah. There we go. Um, now I'll do as we might. Yeah, so again, he has just that little slight dip. And Squirtle's got a similar mouth. All three of them actually have quite similar mouths. Okay. And just tiny, tiny little nostrils. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's also what makes Charmander really cute is that his is that his pupils take up most of his eye um you know because because it reminds us of babies you know that's why you know something's got really big eyes now this looks weird with the lines drawn but when once once we actually put the color in um, it makes a lot more sense um but yeah And it's so funny because it's like it's this really really fine balance between looking really cute and looking really creepy because it's like if you've got someone's eyes that take up all almost their entire eye uh, but it doesn't then they look really really cute uh, however, if then the pupil takes up the entire eye and you can't see any of the white, sometimes that can look really creepy. <laughs> so you'll notice I didn't draw any lines around the flame. And that's because we're actually not going to do any. Generally, you know, in a lot of the official artwork of... Um, now, if you want to, you can. You know, there's no problem with it. But uh, in the official artwork of uh, Pokemon generally uh, they don't do uh, any lines around the flame and that allows that flame to look more wild and free and you know it's not solid you know because fire isn't solid you know you can stick your hand through fire although I wouldn't advise it um, but yeah so what I'm actually gonna do I'm gonna very very lightly very very lightly just leave it you can barely see it um, and see as well like the line doesn't connect there because the flame's gonna go there okay so colors 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 let's go which one will we go with first I think we will get our nice orange up and running so which orange will be nice have a couple of nice now again now I'm using these fancy markers do not worry uh, about using fancy markers. You do not have to use fancy markers. You can get whatever markers you want. Yeah, that's quite a nice one. I think actually, do you know what? Classic bright orange will do the job here because it is strong. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Let's go for pumpkin. Okay. Right, here we go. So. And you'll notice as well, so with this, uh, with Bulbasaur, we had highlights and shade, and also shading. Whereas with Charmander, we're only really having shadow. And a big part of that is, um, so the highlights allow um, Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, and Venusaur to look a little bit slimy. You know, um, not necessarily in a gross way, but you know, just it suggests moisture. You know that that there's um, a reflection coming off uh, their skin, whereas with uh, Charmander, uh, it'd be a bit drier. Although 
Salam uh, salamanders. Ooh, whoops. In which uh, Charmander partially gets his name. He gets from Char, as in like Char Grilled, you know, just fire Char. Uh, and uh, and Salamander, which is a, it's an amphibian. Um, it, I mean, it, it looks like a lizard, but it is an amphibian. And uh, they can grow quite big, actually, as far as I know. Um, see, even I make mistakes, but we'll survive. Um, but yeah, no, the salamander, there's a there's a, an old legend that the salamander actually emerged from the fire. Um, and so salamanders have often um, been associated with fire in certain cultures. Uh, so I think that's why Charmander got the name. Oh, it's interesting too. Now, I don't know the Japanese names for them, but like there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of Pokemon that have different names uh, in Japan, um, uh, which is quite interesting. Some of them they didn't change, namely Pikachu. You know, Pikachu is very much a Japanese name. Uh, we'll get we'll, we'll we'll get we'll get to drawing Pikachu. Let's say the next episode we'll do uh, Squirtle and his gang, not the Squirtle Squad, his evolutions, and uh, then. Um, after that, we'll jump to Pikachu because everybody wants to draw Pikachu. Who doesn't want to? And Pikachu's surprisingly tricky to draw. Um, just in trying to get him to look. It's it's like with Charmander, he's got a very clear body and a very clear head. Whereas with Pikachu, it's not like that. You know, like there's a there's less of a distinction between his head and his body, which makes it a little bit tricky. Do you know what we'll do? While we're up here now, at the tip of the tail, I'm just gonna use a nice gold. So it's almost more of an orange. It's a very orangey uh, yellow for the bottom half of the flame. And this is where practice comes in too, you know, because obviously now I'm, I'm doing this barely without guidelines. But, but, you know. Do you know what? I think I'll go with this, but then I'll do an orange on top of it. Because on its own, this red's a little bit weak. It's got a bit, a bit pale. It's kind of leaning towards pink. Um, but... I think as a basis for our flame, it should actually. Yeah, if I take some orange now and go over this, yeah, like oh, that's that's fine. This one's a really old one. If you look closely, you can see kind of some of my different markers. You know, they're, they're they have different. They're all the same brand, but <laughs> they're all just from different years. And this, I think, is one of the oldest ones. And it still kind of works. It has one tape on it, although I should probably have two tapes on it at this stage. But yeah, so there's your flame. And do you know what I might do? I might just little. Cool, that's good. Now I'm I'm gonna do the yellow of his belly. So uh, I'm gonna show you a slightly different technique now than what I showed you with with uh, Bulbasaur and the gang. Um, now this is a slightly lazier um, way to shade, but. I think the color scheme of Charmander works for this. So I'm actually just gonna use a gray, this, but it's a warm gray. And that warm gray, I think really works with Charmander. So, uh, and the nice thing about the gray is that it still holds on to a lot of the 
colors underneath. Hmm. I need a new one of these markers too. And this is the really handy thing about it, is that you can continue your shading from one color onto the other, and it works. Hmm, I'm thinking something very controversial. I'm thinking that this shade of yellow is perfect for Charizard and I don't think I like it as much for Charmander so because I will be adding on a second color it's not the end of the world But, here we go. Yeah, no, that's a much better color for Charizard. This color is better for Charmander. Ah, look at that. There he is. There is Charmander. Right. And you're able to do this, thankfully, because I started off with a brighter shade. And the shading that I've had that I've put on will still come through. So I don't need to redo the shading, which is nifty. There we go. Beautiful. That's much better. Okay, nice mouth. Um hmm. Because I because I want his yeah there we go that's good because I want his mouth still in shade there we go beautiful and finally look I'm starting to call this one old reliable slate just works it's it's, it's got a wee hint of purple in it and then for Charmander's eyes so his. The colored bit of his eyes. Last one is black. Now black, because we always tend to use there's there's certain markers will always run out before others, and black is one of those ones that tends to run out. You always tend to notice when black runs out too, because it just doesn't look as good. And that's pretty much a Charmander. Boom! There he is. Charmander! Class. No. Charmeleon. Let's get him done. I always kind of liked Charmeleon. I liked the way he looked. Charmeleon. So we've got our um, template underneath. So we'll just start off with his name. Now, so Charmeleon. I enjoy Charmeleon because he's a little bit like a kind of a velociraptor in some ways. So we can start with his head. So his head is, or at a very basic form, is kind of like an upside down egg. That's how we're starting it anyway at an angle and then his body uh, is yeah and his body he's got his wee neck like that and then his body can kind of come down he's quite similar to Charizard you know you'll you'll, you'll notice that um, when we draw Charizard they're built very very similarly now, uh, his 
this is a big, big difference now between him and uh, Charmander is the limbs. So he's got big old shoulders with attitude. Not as big as Mewtwo's, but he's, but he's, he's, he's got shoulders and he's got elbows and he's got arms. So. And so he's got a little thumb. So it's a, like a little triangle, but with a roundy side. And then the other two, one of them is underneath because it's like his, it's like his thumb, and the other two are underneath. And so we can draw that like that. But yeah, the hand itself is very simple. You know, it's not even like a proper hand. Um, his leg, kind of similar to Charmander's in that way, where you know you start by drawing the top, but. You know, that's like it going down to his knee, and then his foot is coming down from here. Now here as well, we can see. So the way that most animals are built, um, or at least two-legged animals, us being one of them. Um, well, actually, us being one of them, we're we're kind of one of the exceptions. Most two-legged animals walk just on the tops of their feet not on their tippy toes but on what we call the balls of your feet um you know so rather than having your heel down like this up here that's its heel you know and you can see that on uh, on four-legged animals as well you know that they, they they do have a heel you know but they just don't uh, they don't use it the same way as we do but you know what? it's got a bit of a his belly kind of sinks a wee bit lower like that too. And he's got this yellow patch. Then his other arm is up. Is up here. He's just kind of, it's a challenge. You know, he's given attitude. He's got one, two, three little fingers. Because he's actually spitting a bit of fire. And now the tail, so watch this. So the tail will continue from the bottom here. So, you know, so it's not going to start up here. It's not going to start down. You know, it has to make sense that the tail sweeps up from seemingly where the, where the back of the back is. The bottom, shall we say. And it being Charmeleon, he's got a bigger flame. So, again, flames are wild. So don't think about the shape of the flame too much. Um, so yeah, so that's a simple thing. But now his head. So, uh, this is a different head to what we've been drawing so far in the series. Um, yeah, the neck might be a little bit too long. That's okay. So bring his head down a little bit. So the back of his head, he's got like a big kind of weird angular back of his head, like this. I'll tell you what, if we even draw like a circle first, so we get an idea of the back part of his head. And so one eye is here. And then the other eye, we actually don't see the other eye because it's tucked in behind there. Um, he has a wee bit of a point to the tip of his nose, but he has his two wee nostrils. And boy, does he have attitude. And what we have as well, just a little, what is a little V here, just from him blowing out the fire. And his eyes, as angry and as full of attitude as he is, he still has those little Charmander eyes. Just not big round ones anymore, you know, they've got a lot of attitude. But, and angry. And then at the back of his head, the signature single spike, of course, with 
uh, Charizard, that becomes uh, double spike, uh, double horns. Let's see how do they draw Charmeleon. Hmm, that's not too bad. Yeah, you can tidy it up. You can tidy it up. Now, we'll do our lines. So, where will we start? We start with a hand here. Again, we often try and start from where it's furthest out in front, and there's nothing in front of that hand. Um, and now watch this shape of this hand. There's a slight kind of bulge at the at the top of this hand there. You know, it's not just perfectly round. And as you see, it kind of comes down and it just bulges a little tiny bit. Little, little, little tiny bit. And then... Now, what do you see this too? His eyes, his eyes are, have a touch of the anime eye to them, so they're not totally, um, they're not totally closed, uh, or like the lines aren't totally closed around it. So we're actually going to leave them open a little bit. Now, we'll start off with his... The color we're going to start off with, you might be a little bit surprised by. It's actually a blush. It's almost like a, like a pink. But that's because this dude is going to have some highlights. But again, highlights, you know, they just make your character jump out. And again, you don't have to do this either. This is like a whole extra step. If you want, you can just colour them in, in a more simple fashion. Um, I'm really tempted to use pastel pink. Or not pastel, antique pink. Yeah, even like like he's a red, but yeah, this yeah, Cause, and 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 it's once once it gets the shading, this color will actually make perfect sense. I mean, it already does. I don't really like it. I was always so frustrated in the show when. Uh, uh, I think that was the moment where I gave up on the anime. <laughs> was when Ash gave away Charizard. <laughs> so I was like, nope, that doesn't make any sense. You know, why would you give away your best Pokemon? And in fairness, I, I get how, like in the show, they were like, well, like, I mean, <laughs> if Ash holds on to Charizard, he'll just win every single fight. So it's like, oh, they have to nerf Ash. So, and also, we want to introduce loads of new. Um, Pokemon as well, and have Ash actually use them rather than just go Charizard, use Fire Blast, <laughs> Charizard, use Seismic Toss again. Um, but still, oh, one of my favorite episodes is the one where uh, Charizard fights Magmar uh, on Cinnabar Island. A great moment. Doo -doo, doo -doo. And uh, and oh my god, the the anime like made Magmar look like one of the most dreaded Pokemon, and then you actually meet one in the game. And you're like, all right, okay, it's fine, <laughs> it's fine. It's like ah, oh, he's Fire Blast. It's like all right, cool, yeah, yeah. That's that's Magmar. That's what he does. All right, okay, so there's that. And there's I while we're at it. Now, 
Okay. So for the shading on Charmeleon though, because I wanna um because I wanna make the um the warmth pop on him. So I'm actually gonna use an orange, I think. Yeah. I'll just give it an extra warmth to it rather than if I use a gray it'll just cool them down even more whereas this because again it's interacting with the ink underneath so it'll add to that pink but this will just give it that extra heat that it needs You know, there's some there's some characters, you know, it's fine having them look kind of pale and and cold, but not Charmeleon. Charmeleon needs to... But no, that shade, that shade of pink, it's perfect for him, but it's cool. I just need something warm. But the thing about using this orange is I can't use it on the on his belly because then it'll just it'll look straight up like orange. Whereas it doesn't really look as much like orange when using it here underneath the pink. Once again, the shadow allows us to continue telling the viewer the shape of this creature. So when we're drawing flames as well, um, generally speaking, so the, you know, we, we know our, our yellows and our oranges and um, it's funny, people tend to, to throw red into into fire. Red doesn't actually kind of factor into flames as much as you'd think. And I know I, I used a bit of red on that last one, but it was more of an orangey red. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it all kind of depends on heat, on kind of what um, temperature it all is. So like the... The really hot parts of the fire will be white and then yellow and then uh, uh, and then orange and then you can even start kind of bringing in your darker oranges and you're uh, burning it, burning it all up and again you know find the flow of your flame you know just get, sprouts up there's no straight lines in fire it's like plants you know i find straight lines in them there's no perfection if your flame looks too perfect it's not it's gonna look weird you know unless it's like a bunsen burner blue flame which is a whole different set of physics okay there's Charmeleon. Do you know what? <laughs> I'm my own worst enemy. I am going to do one more layer on his. Yes, there we go. And that shading was 100%. Happy with that shading. I still need to do his nails as well. Sometimes when you use a lighter color, you, you don't you don't know properly until oh and I also need to do the shading on his belly. I was like, is that it? Uh, but yeah, sometimes you don't know until the until it has dried. Ah, this is much better. This is much better. Much more dramatic. You know, and that is something that 
Charmeleon is, is dramatic. It's going to be tricky whenever I get drawn all the new ones because I won't know what they're like. <laughs> you can tell me in the comments what they're like. And you'll notice this fun little cameo on the site. Well, you won't if it's not on the camera. This is um, Mario and Yoshi, uh, a great little puzzle game on the um, Game Boy. And if anyone can tell me the link between Mario and Yoshi, uh, that particular Game Boy game, and Pokemon, um, you will get a thumbs up from me in the comment section. Gonna just get a little bit. No, I mean, I'm just being really pernickety here. If you want to, you can leave his toes white. It's fine. But I'm just giving him a little, little off white. And a little bit of shade. Okay, there we go. That's that's Charmeleon done now. Woohoo! And I, one of my favorites. Fairy die a little bit. Oh, Charizard. I love Charizard. Charizard is one of my favorite Pokemon. Oh, I remember when when Pokemon cards came out that first Charizard that big Charizard card oh man it was so it was so cool oh also yeah I probably won't do the uh, I'll do like the mega forms or the and the Gigantamax forms at some point as well so starting with Charizard um, we'll actually start with his body so we'll He's going to be in flight, so he's got a nice big round body. Not a perfect circle, more of an oval. Slightly egg-shaped. It's at a bit of a weird angle. Um, so this leg is popping out the back like that. This other leg is popping out the back like that. And his feet popping out like this. Two, one, two, three. Now we can give these a bit more. But this is just to get all the all of his bits and pieces in order first. So his stomach, his yellow belly. Not that you would call a Charizard yellow belly to his face. And then his tail. Again his tail's gonna go behind the leg but still. We do that line so that we get the flow. And look, he's got a big thick tail, so the tail actually starts above where his leg is, or in and around. Again, everybody's picture is going to be slightly different. You know, your picture is going to be different from my picture. You're going to be different from the next picture. Um, now, I'm going to draw this circle here and you're like what <laughs> it's like we've chopped his head off but that's just so we see where his neck is in relation to his shoulders so we're going to do two wee circles here and his arms can come out here now these aren't going to finish off as circles but this is just so we can um get them so his hands can start off as triangles and he's kind of got weird hands uh, like here this this arm is kind of funny because it's, it's coming coming close to us whereas this hand his elbows bent whereas this his his elbows actually straight but his hands are triangles and what do I mean by that well he's got three fingers on them and so the base of them can be a triangle because look at this now so on it's a bit like Mewtwo actually Except this dude's got nails. Um, so we can do some circles on either end of the. And then we can add the nails and then it all starts making sense. Have them 
going to usually kind of pointing inwards like that and now for his head well first his neck we'll do his neck first the neck will come up like this just so we know that where his head is and so at the top and his neck is actually so this is the front now so this is so we know where his head is attached to and so now we can give yeah about that so do a circle for the front of his head but he's got his jaw open so actually you know what? next maybe a wee bit too long give him a bigger head yeah bring his jaw down like that gonna rub some lines out just to make that a little bit clearer for you okay so that's the bottom of his mouth and you can actually draw just another little kind of it's like a rectangle just so you can see roughly where it goes and then the top of his mouth comes out over here so you can start with a rectangle like that for now I'm gonna do one dot two dots for his two nostrils and then his eyes angry triangles like that again just to start off because we're going to be giving him more detail i love drawing dragons did he ever no he's still fire and flying even though he looks like the quintessential di uh, dragon of of pokemon but he's still just oh well and also his flame flame over here you've drawn the flame twice now so you know you know how it is it's the same as the other guys and the bit that makes charizard so these are if we imagine these are like big arms so it's like an extra little kind of arm going up now i do have my problems with charizard's wings in that and i'm not even going to go into the whole you know six limb thing that's that's a, that's a whole other issue but they just they, they make no sense um because if you imagine these wings are actually no they do kind of make sense um but yeah if you imagine these wings are basically big hands and this little bit here is a thumb and this little bit here is a thumb you look at a bat and that's how its wings work and so you draw one big finger there and then another big long finger there and then at the bottom you can connect them with a little kind of bent line like that magic but my big problem with charizard's wings is that once you actually give it color um there's only there's only uh color there's only orange up along the top here and all of this is colored in but it's fine that's fine i suppose I probably would have made it made it look a little bit too busy perhaps so this is charizard this is charizard i'm actually gonna make his yellow belly a little bit bigger like that but yeah no this is a fun pose and i can rub out that little line there so we can see a little bit more clearly yeah this looks cool i like it now we can add a wee bit more detail here along the mouth we can give him some teeth you're generally able to see now see watch this now we're gonna we're gonna tidy up this top jaw a little bit so we're gonna a couple little kind of bends but watch this he still has that little kink down between his two nostrils. He still has that little kind of V shape. But then it goes over each side. And on either side of that, he's got one tooth there and the other tooth there. Now this does take practice. This is a trick, this is a tricky pose. But give it a go. And and that's another handy thing about the the setup of what we're doing with our Pokedex in our um in the binder is if there's a picture that you don't like you know if you're not happy with a picture it doesn't have to go in the pokedex you know you, you can you can 
you can do it again you know you can take it out you can redo it you know so um so the pencil lines are getting very busy here uh, and I don't want to over pencil it either so I'm actually going to add some of the details once we uh, once we get going uh, but again just out of curiosity let's see how I did <laughs> back in the day yeah yeah so again so you see here the way like the tail so the way the tail is like coming from up here and it should follow the curve of his ballet around you know oh you know like I'm like I get the main points but uh, that we things like that uh, and and even actually it should follow the curve of the back and the fall the curve of the belly so it's because it's all one unit you know and you can and you can see that here you know it follows that curve because um, even though they're made up characters they still uh, make some anatomical sense <sighs> except these wings um <clears throat> anyway <laughs> speaking of anatomical sense wait till we get to some of the other pokemon <laughs> magnemite anyone <anyway. laughs> anyway let's go let's 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 start adding some lines here uh, so we're gonna start off with his eye and his eye is just kind of terrifying um and just so he's lost he's, he's he still has the 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 white reflection but he's lost the cutesiness of it there's an element of it but it's n not really there so we've got a big angry eyebrow and now i'm actually going to do the snout here it's got that little kink bring his nostril over a little bit and his nostrils actually are just two wee lines as opposed to the dots did the dots so they were just a bit clearer and here we can see the side of that other but barely and there's like little lines on it just to to show its shape to show how it all works and again so this circle is not going to be a circle it's just going to be a kink of the shoulder and again like a lot of this kind of physiology you can apply to drawing dragons too even though he's not a dragon type um, uh, or even drawing dinosaurs as well, you know, if you if you can connect, draw this, you know, take away those wee horns and you can basically have a big cartoon T-Rex. And obviously take away the flaming tail and the wings. And, but you know what I mean? And like, that's what's cool about these. Um, like, as a, I drew tons and tons of Pokemon when I was younger, and it really kind of helped train me in how how to draw like a lot of these kind of cartoon figures you know by drawing them over and over again and just seeing how they're built and seeing how you know d different different tips and tricks how to draw simple characters you know what's really cool with pokemon too is because there's such a, a different amount of of character types of like different animals and different things you know it can really open you up to um you know whereas you you might be like oh i'm going to sit down and draw a flamingo today but it's like oh well what about that pokemon that's basically a flamingo and you can see as well like it's not it's not perfect like there's all sorts of little kind of kinks and because you know you imagine you know there's like bones and things inside these and you know generally like when when you're drawing kind of more realistic things um you would tend to actually start from a skeleton you know and start start kind of drawing uh a skeleton i, I this wing should actually attach down here and again one line like that one line like that cool 
There is Charizard, my favorite Pokemon. Well, one of my favorites. Uh, Knight, let's see. E, be careful when Robonite. Be careful that you don't scrunch your paper. I wonder when the first scrunch will be. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. But it's not when I'm going to be super conscious of it. It's when I've forgotten about it. And I'm being complacent. And I'm being a little bit too relaxed. I'm like, ha <laughs> And it's, it's these corners up here too. You know, because you could just drag that whole corner down with you. Just be very careful. Okay. Boom. That's cool. Ooh, and highlights. We'll start off with these highlights. Okay, so here we go. There we go. So, Charizard's big yellow belly. So his belly is more yellow. His eyes, though, he still has those blue eyes, those deep blue eyes. Yeah, this just, again, helps create the shape. Okay. Flame. Well, no. This one I'm actually going to do slightly differently. Rather than just doing the the little bits of flame that I want, I'm actually going to do the whole flame, and then I'll add the the bits. Wait a minute! What just happened? The flame is there, and also half of that wing is there. What happened? Um, so the battery died. <laughs> battery died on my camera, and uh, it didn't make a sound when it died because it was dead. Uh, so um, I went on and I finished this, and I did this. Thankfully, I didn't finish the whole thing and record a whole pile of other things after, because that would have killed me. Um, but yeah, so you can just see what I did here. Um, welcome back. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so I did the whole flame first, but then I went over it with a little bit of orange. Um, and then a little bit of red on top of that orange. But again, I know I was talking about kind of red not being as common in fire as you'd think. It's always more, it's an orangey red, if anything. So adding that red, it combined with the orange, you know, while the ink was still a bit wet. And then for the wing, we did, oh, let me turn my lights on. My lights aren't on, you would have seen a difference there. There we go, aha, there we go. It's looking more like what it looked like. There we go, beautiful. Um, so we are adding some uh marine to the wings so yay we're back on track yeah ge generally i would want uh, kind of warm grays for shading him but for these i think i'm actually going to use a, a cool oh maybe a nice yeah I'll just settle with Ice Grade 3, it's fine. <laughs> um, this is 
is not the best choice. And it's not the worst either. I have seen worse. We'll see when it dries. It might actually dry a little bit lighter. But if that's the case, it's fine because uh, I'll actually go over it with a darker shade. At least then I'll know where all of my shading spots are. So a lot less thinking to do. What to do? No, definitely darker shade. That was useless. Um, hmm. Okay, that's good. That's better. And yeah, there we go. That looks like what I'm looking for. It's darker, but not too dark either, you know, because we still want the still want the, the turquoise to come through that marine. Oh, I remember that wonderful reel that I was telling you. Oh, let me turn on it. <laughs> I'll say this to you. Don't be mean to yourself. I'm being quite mean to myself right now. Don't be mean to yourself. Because we take what we, we say seriously. We take ourselves, you know, because we know what we say is what we think. Usually. So... Don't be mean to yourself, because you'll believe it. You know when you say mean things, you don't always believe it. Or you don't always mean it, is what I mean. And then finally, Ivory. For his claws. You're like, why do you even bother? You know, it just... But it just gives that... Rather than just having them these perfect white, you know, it just it makes them look that little bit more real. Although the teeth remain nice and white. Just so they kind of pop, stand out a little bit more. And then finally, a little bit of shade. And there we have it! Charizard! Boom! I'm delighted with that. That looks really cool. It looks scary. But in a fun, family friendly sort of way. Let's have a look at him with Charmeleon. And Charmander. Sweet! So, next thing we do, we can put them in our Pokedex. Pokedex, Pokedex, Pokedex. And do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Charmander, Charmeleon, Charizard. I need to get a better red pen. That one's rubbish. No, sweet. There we go. So we can unclip that. And now, since we were here last, oh look, there. Well, there's all the Pokemon we have to draw. There's our Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Venusaur, and now Charmander. Some ASMR for you as well, folks. Paper sliding. And Charmeleon. And Charizard.
Mm. Awesome! Sweet! Oh, this is looking cool already. Very cool. Nice. Um, at a later date as well, either I'm gonna get a new binder or I'm gonna show you, might even do an episode, how to make this look more like a Pokedex, which would be kind of cool. And that's us for today. We have now drawn Charmander, Charmeleon, and Charizard. We have drawn six Pokemon in our Pokemon of like over a thousand. So we'll get there, we'll get there. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell icon to find out when the next video is. I aim to have these up once a week. So weekly drawing of Pokemon, and we can slowly but surely build up and add to our Pokedex, which is exciting. All, although if you're discovering this at a later date, you've got a whole pile of Pokemon to catch up on, so woohoo. You can support this channel at patreon.com forward slash John D. Ruddy. You support me as an artist, as an art educator, and as a history educator, as it also helps support Manny Man Does History, another animated history series on my other channel. Next episode, we will be doing... Oh, who's that Pokemon? It's Squirtle. It's Squirtle. Uh, Squirtle, War Turtle, and Blastoise. Uh, but as the weeks go on, well, we're not just going to be going up through them in, you know, numerical order. We will be going... We'll be doing like Pikachu. We'll be doing some of the legendaries. We'll be doing loads. Uh, and not just first generation. And even though I'm an old fogey, and I'm like, yay! 150. One. Um, but uh, yeah, no, we will be doing more than just Gen 1 and Gen 2. Um, and I'm really excited about that because I, m most of those I have not drawn before. Uh, so I'm excited to uh, give them a shot and see what they look like and see what they are. And that's going to be fun. And we can discover it together. And you can let me know in the comments. Um, also, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok where I post daily history videos. And also, uh, you can tag me if you have drawn your own pictures based on these, uh, then uh, send them to me. You know, I'd, I'd love to see them. So, uh, until next time, thanks for drawing. <laughs>